<laughs> Hello everyone, Frank and Darren here again, and we're continuing with the Halloween franchise with the Oscar winning Halloween 5. <laughs> And we have a special guest, Mr. Dave Cray himself. So, yes. Dave, your first experience of watching Halloween 5. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for having me back on. My first experience of watching Halloween 5 would have been in uh, probably, well, I guess 89 or 90. Uh, I didn't see it in the theater, so maybe I, I first saw it when it came out on VHS in 90, maybe. Um, I remember I was a big Halloween fan by that time, and um, I remember even at... 10 years old thinking to myself this is crap this this is this doesn't <laughs> this make four. any sense this ain't halloween four <laughs> yeah, yeah i didn't know what it had halloween? happened i didn't i didn't know what this was i didn't know where it was going who was the man in black you know and the, I, I you know i remember my 10 year old self being obsessed with who is this guy who that doesn't make any sense what's going on what's happening and being totally disappointed little 10 year old me being very very disappointed at the Myers house and just that whole, it just didn't make it, even at that age, I, I was self-aware uh, and wise enough to know that this makes no sense, <laughs> you know, and, and I didn't like it. And no. Darren, yourself. I think I mentioned on um, on our last episode that, that Halloween 4 was the last theatrical release of a Halloween film in the UK up until H2O came out. And so mm. I had to wait until the early 90s to see this, I think. Um, it came out... Uh, um, probably in about 91, 92 on, on, on VHS over here. Um, and yeah, I was just like <laughs> disappointed completely. I I had no idea what was going on. I, it was just like, who's he? Who's she? What's going on here? Why is Michael Log flooming in the first five minutes of the, of the film? <laughs> <laughs> Man, oh man, and he's going like this, you know. Yeah, he's rolling around on the on the rapids, and yeah. you know, I don't need to see him crawling out of a bush. And, and, and no, you know, I've said that many. I've said it many times on my own channel. I've said, you know, you don't need to, and people have acute because you know people don't they don't understand what I'm saying, but. It, you know, I've often said that I don't need to see Michael's process, and and uh, people have said, "Well, we've seen Michael." Yeah, but uh, yes, not his process in general. I mean, his process in terms of when he's in a vulnerable position. I don't think we should ever see the shape vulnerable. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and and uh, how he gets out of a vulnerable situation should just be he just does. It's just we yeah. we, we don't know yeah. how. Um, and to see him, you know, floating down the logs on the rapids, and you know, I mean. You you could probably you know if you listen carefully I think you can hear oh God oh no you know <laughs> and, and we don't need to see him like that you know we, he he just does I don't need to see him crawling out and oh it was awful it was just terrible yeah. and this is not an attack on Don Shanks he did what he had to do and he did a good job with what he had to do but <laughs> man man it was bad it was what about you Frank where did you first see it I saw this in the theater my mom took me uh, again. She took me to it, and uh, your mother was uh, amazing. I said, "You know what? Well, uh, might as well. You saw four. Might as well see five. And as a kid, I liked it. But then you grow up, and then you realize, oh, I like this one. I can't believe I did. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. well, moving on from that, Dave. Mm -hmm. What is the best character for you in Halloween Five? The best character. Well, I think there's a through line here. I, I, <laughs> I think, I think, uh, you know. Listen, the best character for me in Halloween 5, and this isn't saying much, you know, again, folks, those of you that are watching it, you know, you know, uh, has got to be Dr. Loomis. Um, and, and I think the reason for that is not because he's great in this movie. He's not. Um, you know, he was far better in, in 4. Uh, in this movie, he's he's he appears far more inebriated than ever before. I mean, there's there's a great line. <laughs> It's a great line um, when him and Rachel are leaving, I guess, the the place where Jamie is. And, and he sort of, you know, takes the hair of that thing into his hand. And, you know, they're walking along the porch. You know, he, he strokes the hair of like the Raggedy Ann doll or whatever. Or, yeah, whatever it is. Or like a... 
Sniffing. A scarecrow, a whatever it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it, right? And he, you know, and they're walking along the porch, and then, uh, you know, she's afraid, and he leans into her. I'm just, I haven't written down here, and he's talking. He's like, well, you know, blah blah blah, and then he goes, "There's nothing." When he says, he's like, "There's nothing wrong with being afraid." Yeah, it's just the way he he leans in, like, yeah. You know, you know, like he's like, ah, you can pick smell. You can almost like smell his breath. And uh, he just appears drunk in that scene. So Loomis is not a great character in this movie. I mean, I actually think he's probably better in Halloween six than he is in yeah. Halloween five. Agreed. And so it's not, it's not saying a lot. Um, but because Dr. Loomis is that one constant, uh, mm. he's sort of the, he's, he's, we are seeing things through his eyes, you know, essentially we, he's that one we look to as, as the one that has the answers that knows it all that, that, yeah. that, you know, is able to tell us what's going on. And, and so when he's on screen, he still commands, although not as much in the other films, he commands still a bit of a presence, although a wobbly, you know, presence, um, but, but certainly a bit of a presence. So when he's on screen, I'm always it's it's the best parts of Halloween five. And again, that's that's that's, you know, it's not saying a whole lot because he's he's really not that great in this movie, but he is the best character in this movie, primarily because he's that one con. He's that through line that we he's can, the life we, of the party. Right. That we gravitate towards. You know, it's it's uh uh, I mean, that's really what it is. So uh, for that, he's the best character. Drunk, stumbling. <laughs> I, uh, you know where he is. Don't you? Sake, stop her. And all. <laughs> stop her. <laughs> all of that. I mean, that's, you know, he's, he's, yeah. He's, he, he he's, just, he's, I mean, he's, he's kind of. He, he's That's insane in this film, isn't he? Oh, God. He's, I, I just find him kind of like, he's creeping about all over the place, popping out of, you know, dark corners and, and, and just turning up when you least expect him. Well, and um, when when um, uh, Jamie is like writing on the board or whatever and the camera kind of, you know, pans over like, there's Loomis right at the window, like, like he's like, oh, there she is. <laughs> and when he's in the Myers house in quotes and that animal comes out of the chute and he falls back and he's like, oh, <laughs> you know, it's like, Jesus. The only thing missing from that laugh was a, <laughs> Yeah, you know, he does look like he's I mean, a little burp, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. He's terrible, but he's he's the best part of the movie. Yeah. How about you, yeah. Darren? It, you agree? It's it's Loomis again because I just I love watching him just sort of aimlessly wandering around, worrying about where his next booze is coming from. You know, because <laughs> that's what he seems to be doing all the time. Yeah. You know, and it, it, he's. He's, we've lost the gloves this time round. He's taken the uh, the gloves off, so you can see the the egg looks slightly different as well mm. on his face. Mm. Yeah. At least it's more consistent this time. I think Greg Nicotero and his gang probably looked at Halloween Thor and thought, "Jesus, that thing had a mind of its own. It, it was kind of moving around his head <laughs> for the movie, right. wasn't it? It was yeah. changing shape and appearance, and they, <laughs> you know they obviously thought that we've got to we've got to get that right this time. Let's do a prosthetic that's going to look the same every day, and you know people aren't going to laugh at it, looking at it, thinking it's a nipple or something. Right, um, but, <laughs> but yeah, I agree. I couldn't think of anybody else because, as you say, Loomis is the best of a bad bunch in this film, um, yeah. and if there's any takeaway from this movie, it's him. That's it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Loomis. What about you, Frank? Uh, I'm going to go off the reservation with you guys, and I'm going to say <laughs> the man in black. No. <laughs> what? Yes. What? <laughs> what? You know, you know, kill the me. The best? Kill me, because you know what? Not only don't we have any You've lost all credit him, here, Frank. <laughs> we don't have any lines from him. He's the least annoying, and he's probably the most sober <laughs> Out of everybody on set, plus he a added. Good point. <laughs> uh, plus he added a little bit of mystique as a twelve-year-old me watching this movie, trying to figure out who Michael was and who this guy was, and what is he doing? Is he going to hurt Michael, protect Michael, help Loomis? You know, go drinking with Loomis. 
uh, <laughs> kidnap, uh, you know, kidnap Jamie. Who knows? Mm-hmm. And this is throughout the whole movie. I remember sitting in the theater and everyone behind me uh, saying, who is this man? Oh, it's probably his brother. You know, oh, it's his father. It was always questioning. No one cared about Michael on screen. They always wanted to know who the man in black was. And I'm still waiting for that uh, police massacre uh, scene to show up mm. somewhere. We're not. We're probably never going to see it. But yeah, for me, mm. it's the Man in Black because he was completely different and added some mystique into the movie. <sighs> okay, we'll move on. Yeah. We'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dave, your worst character, <laughs> the Man in Black. <laughs> for Look, the opposite this ways. Is, <laughs> for the this opposite is, reasons. This is. This was actually uh, tougher than I thought it was going to be because there are a lot of terrible characters in this movie. And All the I race think, to first. <laughs> right. And I think most people watching are going to say Tina. She's the worst. She's absolutely the worst. And, and there's an argument to be made for that, for sure. Uh, you know, we're emotionally attached to Rachel. Rachel mm-hmm. kicks the bucket in the first, like, 15, 20 minutes of the movie. And now we're attached to this sort of, you know, bubbly ditzy sort of uh chick who 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 becomes kind of the the our our anchor to jamie and and i get that i i get why that's uh her character is uh is a bit annoying um you know i think mikey her boyfriend too i think is a like what the hell is this 1958 i mean he's there and i mean it's 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 89 and and he's he looks like the fawns and he's you know and he and all this Licky's stuff and he's gone. like hey, yeah <laughs> from greece Licky, yeah exactly and then he's like hey babe what's going on babe what's going on like it's just the uh, watch this i'm like ah, but it has to be the man in black for me because of everything that surrounds it it was if this wasn't true, if there was a through line and if they knew exactly why they threw hit no pun intended, threw him into the film, uh, then maybe this would be more forgivable. But it's it's out there now. It's common knowledge that what's his name? Marquan, Quan, whatever the director's name Dominique, was. I almost forget his name. Dominique Ophine, you know, how many, or Gerard or something? Gerard or you know, yeah. Marquan. I'm thinking of the director of Return of the Jedi. Uh, anyway, I don't know where that came Joan from. Joan of Arc. Uh, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Uh, anyways, yeah, him, <laughs> uh, he, you know, it's common knowledge now that they, ba- I mean, he, he has said, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but well, we, we threw the man in black in there as sort of this subplot kind of mysterious thing. We didn't have, we had no idea who he was. We had no idea where it was going. We would, we were just going to leave that up to the people that did yeah. Halloween six. And it's like, so what, how do you throw something in? And they did that because they felt that the movie didn't have enough mystery or or Mm. you know some sort of extra thing rather than just the main plot of what was happening and maybe it felt a little too linear a little too pedestrian i don't know but but they added this this little thing in there to make people like frank go oh oh, and it made me do that too but then we had to wait six years to find out who it was and they didn't know who it was in 1989 and i just think it's it's just a strange thing to add yeah. it feels yeah. weird out of place he kicks a dog uh i was gonna say they had a dog that needed kicking didn't they yeah. so- <laughs> yes they did a dog that needed kicking. you know he looks like uh you know um Father Marin, or you know, uh, you know the briefcase yeah. and the the, the trench coat. And the, yeah. I mean, all he needed to do was walk up and be, you know, uh, silhouetted against some light coming from the Myers house, and it would have looked like he was there to do an exorcism. Um, yeah. I just yeah. it felt strange and out of place. I think he's the worst character. Yeah, yeah. Darren yourself. Um, it's two. I've got two, and it's uh, Deputy Nick and Deputy Tom. I don't know oh, what yeah. the. F- nail these guys are doing in this film. they're terrible yeah <laughs> they're absolutely terrible and the, the theme music that goes along to it all that kind of <laughs> boing, bing, boing. <laughs> never 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 in any terrible. Halloween movie was that scene or heard what, and and not only do they do it in that one scene it's every time they're on screen there's all this <laughs> and boing, <laughs> bing bing shocking <laughs> oh, it's just so out of place what? yeah 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 so, so Deputy Nick and Deputy Tom are my worst characters. Frank, yours. I, I was going to pick the deputies myself, but then I'd say they're not really in it too much, only like maybe two shots. And so I picked Billy because 
Billy, it was just he's just a horned up ten year old, mm. and basically the only way commu- uh, Jamie can communicate is with Billy there, who stutters, and you know it. it this poor kid is just you didn't really need him. You didn't really need him. You didn't really need the deputies either. But Billy was all you didn't even need to, Jamie. No, he didn't really need Jamie. <laughs> but he gave her uh, Jamie his locket. He started blushing, and oh, that's right. You know, and they're running together in the fields. He's really he's the actual stalker. running together in the field. I'm sorry, I'm just picturing like <laughs> gallivanting through the fields together, smiling in a pirate hat, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's so that's my worst character. Uh, mm. So Dave, the best mm. line of Halloween Five for well, you. The best line of Halloween Five is the best thing about Halloween Five. It's the best thing in Halloween Five. Uh, it's so damn good that it shouldn't be. Uh, it's shocking. It is shocking to hear something so good in such a bad movie. It's too bad it's not in one of the other films. I mean. Uh, uh, this line would have been fantastic even in the first movie or the second movie. Um, and that is, um, uh, I might be paraphrasing this a little bit, but uh, it is when Loomis is talking to Meeker and he's spilling all his, you know, Jack Daniels all over him. And, and he's like, uh, <laughs> and he says, uh, I prayed that he would burn in hell, but in my heart, I knew hell would not have him. I mean, it's such a great line it is it is so great it's un, it stands out as too great for the movie and so so that i think is the best line in the film it's, it's fantastic like, it's like michael's too too scary even for hell to take right yeah. right exactly <laughs> you know he's, he's he's too evil for ian for for even hell for even the devil and that's that's a, it's such a brilliant line that's that is it's so unfortunate it's it's in this movie <laughs> it's the best it lines is. It is. And it's also my my um, best line as well. I'd written that down here. I prayed that he would burn in hell, but in my heart, I knew that hell would not have him. And the, one of the big letdowns of, of of Halloween Five is the fact that Loomis doesn't have any of those kind of monologues. You know, you've got them in Halloween One, you've got them in Halloween Two, um, you've, you've got the one in Halloween Four when he goes into the to the police station to talk to Mika, a filling station in flames. Yeah. Um, you know, but you don't have any of that. He's just waffling throughout this film, and you know that's the scriptwriter that's, that's just failed to put that in. Mm-hmm. And I always wonder whether Loomis's, um, I'd say Donald Pleasance's um, talent brought that line to the script. I wonder mm. whether that is something that he came up with himself. I don't know, but you know, given his experience of playing Loomis in the past. And the monologues that he has, I just wonder whether he snuck that in himself because the rest That's of the script doesn't owe itself to, to to lines like that at all. That's a that's a great point, Darren. It, it's 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 so it's so poetic and so good mm. that it's like who the fuck wrote this? You know, like yeah, who who yeah. It, it 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 almost you know I imagine somebody in the wee hours of the morning, like you know, walking in and going through the script and going, you know what's writing something down like this and <laughs> changing it and then just kind of you know putting it there and then he's like oh i guess this is what i'm supposed to say <laughs> you know or whatever like i mean i it's like the that could not have been who why wasn't the whole take take the 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 level of thought and attention to detail that you put into that one line and put it in the rest of the movie yeah you know yeah. it's i i agree it's so out of place it is. I um, it is. I I agree a hundred percent. That is also my best line because out of every Halloween movie that Donald Pleasance in, is in, portraying Loomis, it's always either a monologue or a simple line that explains the situation at hand mm-hmm. and explains Michael. In part one, he's full of them. He's full of yeah. lines. Yeah. Part two, he's again, he's he's got lines full of lines. Part four. He's really crazy. He's really yeah. crazy in the beginning. Yes. And then this one, he's trying to tell everybody that I've been affected as well. Look at my hand. Look at my mm. face. Mm. I don't want anyone to live through this again. He needs to burn in hell. Yeah. But hell's not going to take him. No. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's just that we have to stop this here and yeah. now. And that's the best line. So, 
even though we're getting into the, just the one best line of this whole movie, there's so many worse lines. And Dave, <laughs> which one worst line is it for you? The one that actually says, oh, they threw that in there. I'm, I'm they got turn reams this off. of paper here. Look, look at him. He's got loads of them. So, so I, wrote, I wrote down here the, uh, the worst, the worst line. Oh, hang on. So many. There's so uh, many. Okay, it's around here somewhere. Uh, well, uh, no, that's not it. There's a lot of them. And, and you know, I mean, cookie woman. Yeah, that's, 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 that's up there. I mean, that's true. But I think for me, it, it, there's so many, there's so many, but, but this is, it goes what back sheds to a tear to your eye. Uh, probably. Let me just see here. Uh, you know, I'm I'm looking here. You were so uh, pissed writing them down. I was, I was. Well, okay, I'll give you a couple, and then I'll have to pick one, right? So, you know, uh, Tina's bum da bum da bum da bum da. I mean, that's in my head, and I and I want to like smash my face into the thing. Um, the other one is not spoken; it's uh, written down when they throw the the brick through the window, and it says the mm-hmm. evil child must die, and the must is underlined. I'm thinking, well, it's a good thing that thing's underlined, correct? Because grammar. if it wasn't, well, I mean, you know, it, n- now look, look, if it wasn't underlined, I could see them going, ah, that's not. Deal. But it's underlined, so they're like, okay, well, they're dead serious now. Why did the they must is die? underlined. Isn't that the action? It has to, you know, die. Yeah, it, yeah. must die. Must I die. Mean, the, the, that whole moment, though, is just, we were talking off, off camera beforehand about this, and, you know, Rachel's leaving her, I presume, to go and get laid somewhere or something. <laughs> leaving her, leaving her um, stepsister um, yes. on the scariest night of the year, a year yeah. before... Um, before her yeah. uncle, uh, before her uncle tried to open her up like a tin of tuna, That's and right. uh, you know, and right after this moment where this brick's gone through the window, proclaiming right. that the, this kid must die. That's it. It's With arguably like, the scariest man on Halloween, which is Doctor <laughs> Loomis. I mean, this is really. I mean, with it's the, not Michael. With, with, <laughs> with a drunk doctor. Yeah, with a drunk doctor who's not related to them at all. Um, so yeah, so there's those two, then there's, 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 uh, uh, I, there's a line at the very beginning when, when, um, uh, Jamie is brought in and she's convulsing and they want to, uh, slit her throat so they could start an air tracheotomy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And, uh, Luma suddenly shows out of nowhere, like, no, <laughs> he's like, how did he get in there? Right. And then he's like, she's, she's you know, and, and thankfully he did because she actually did calm down and come too. And she's clearly alive. She's a bit pale, but she's okay. And then the doctor turns to Loomis. And I, I get, I get why this is said, but it's, I, it's still kind of funny. The doctor then turns to Loomis and, and say, she, I think he says something like, you see, and the doctor says, I see you stupid. This girl is dead. I see you stupid. This girl dead. And, I, and I'm thinking, <laughs> she's not. She's alive. <laughs> Thank God. This do- Who that. is this doctor? She's clearly <laughs> alive. <foot> <laughs> yeah, are you a podiatrist or something? I mean, what is this? <laughs> I see, stupid. This girl is dead. No, she's not. She's <laughs> she's alive. <laughs> clearly alive. I thought that was Look ridiculous. <laughs> but I, so, you know, and then there's just one that I found funny as I was watching the movie this morning is when uh, it is the cookie woman moment mm-hmm. when they're trying to figure this out. And she's like, a big, a big, whatever. And Dr. Loomis is like, a big woman who works in the store. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. He's it's like he got excited, you know. Oh, really? I like my women big. (laughs) I'll beat you there. (laughs) (laughs) Get out, get out now. <laughs> so you know, as you can see, it's hard to pick one, but those are a few that are 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 bad. Yeah, how about you, yeah. Tarrant? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the Cookie Woman. That whole scene is just you know, it, it's just fucking terrible, isn't it? <laughs> but I do like the fact that when she goes, you know, big woman and, and all the cops go yeah down at the gas station yeah. <laughs> they all know straight away don't they who it is. The main. Yeah. The they all love voluptuous cookies. cartoon women i mean that's really what it is yeah. <laughs> but i think my um worst line and it's kind of you kind of mentioned it uh, 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 
the, the whole bump da bump da bump da thing. And it, th- there's a bit where Loomis turns around to to Tina and says, "Be sensible, Tina." And she goes, <laughs> "I'm never sensible if I can help it." <laughs> in her best Elmo impression. Elmo <laughs> loves you. God. Yeah, it's oh, that is grates bad. on you. Everything just grates on you in this film. It's awful. yeah, like fingers on a chalkboard. It's just. You know, like I, yeah. again, I you know yeah. that that scene with with it's Tina and nose hairs. Oh God, <laughs> it's it's that scene with Tina and Sammy, and they're out walking in the yard, and you see Don Shanks in the. I, I saw it again. I was watching it again, Just and you see totally. him, and he's he's in the back underneath that tree, and he's got like some sort of you know uh, knife he's or something, and, and he's he's lost. He's not even watching. <laughs> he watches them, patient. and then if you look, he turns, and like a branch f- falls. Like he just accidentally <laughs> cut down a branch, it falls, and he's facing the opposite direction. Like he's kicking stones, waiting for the director to say now. Like it look, it's so aimless and ridiculous. There's no suspense, <laughs> there's no tension. It looks like he's bored. Like he's like he's looking at them, going, ah, I don't know, maybe. You know, <laughs> they can cut this. Wait, you added it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right oh god is and people have reached out to me no dave that's the gardener it's not the gardener <laughs> it is not the stop this the insanity it is not the gardener it's not okay. it is he's doing a <laughs> shitty <Don> job <laughs> oh god it's just don shanks improvising he, he's <laughs> just wandering around like he's like wandered in off a different set or something yes he's, yes Oh, but there's a bit as well oh. where he's stalking Rachel in the. I think she's just got out of the shower or something. She's in the closet. Yes. He turns around and he just sort of like walks out, stands there, stares at her, and then just steps to the side. Yes. Um, oh, I wrote that shot. Yeah. Just... <laughs> I wrote. Oh, there's I two do? things. Oh, it's terrible. Like he's he's in there and he's. I have a video on my channel, like from mm-hmm. two years ago, where I'm talking about this. And he, the 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 mask is like out to here, like this. The the neck is far too big. But he's in the closet. So there's a POV shot it's from one of those within dinosaurs the closet. In Jurassic Park, right? Oh, it's terrible, Frank. <laughs> POV shot in the closet, looking at, <laughs> looking at. Ah, I think he's good. <laughs> That's so good. That is true. Newman. Anyway, so uh, he's. <laughs> Uh, the POV's in the closet looking at Rachel. She comes to the closet to get something to put on. And, you know, if it's not enough that, okay, like, I get it. It's a POV shot. It's it's Michael. No, we have to have Michael, Don Shanks, his hand come up onto the onto the, the, the bar in the closet to just let us know, I guess, that this is a POV shot. You know, we see his hand. But to Darren's point, she's there. Here's his opportunity. This is it. This is the moment you've been waiting for. There's no logical reason why he would do this. There he is. He comes out of the closet. You see him coming out of the closet. It's like, oh, this is it. Rachel's distracted. She's looking at herself in the mirror, out the window, whatever it is. She's there. She's got something on. This is the moment. What does he do? He goes, no, maybe not now. And walks and leaves frame. (laughs) He just leave. I don't understand why he would do that. He had to leave know? to take a shit. He's like, oh, He's I gotta coming. go. <laughs> yes, that's what it was. It's so anticlimactic, and it's just, oh god. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to hog the whole thing here, but <laughs> as you can see, I'm very emotional about this. His whole goal was to kill her because yes. she's the one that fucking ran him over in the street. You know, <laughs> it's like- exactly. And but she's emotionally just- attached to Jamie. Right. So that's, yes. Yeah. You want to drive her nuts. But it guys, looked like. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Go, 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 go ahead. Continue. Go, go ahead. I was just gonna say. You know, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, You're passionate. Um, it is. It lo- it literally and it it looks like somebody is cosplaying as Michael Myers, mm-hmm. and they come out of the closet yeah. and they're just like, oh, I'm just. You know what I mean? It looks like she was. It looks like he came out of the bathroom stall. Like she's in some, and he comes out and he just leaves. Like it doesn't. It looked like it's just terrible. It's terrible. Mm. I'm done. <laughs> All right, I got. I, I could top you guys with the worst line ever in a Halloween movie is in this movie, wow. and that is Jamie saying "Uncle." And oh, the whole you're right. thing, you're right, right there. He's, she, and he takes Falls off his upon. mask and he lets down his guard for the first time. That is not my Michael. Mm. <laughs> 
Frank, you are, if, if I could put that meme that everybody posts where at the Academy Awards, people are all like standing on their feet going like this. That's what I, I would, I would post that right now because that is, that is, that is a bad line. Uncle, let me see. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no. I remember. Um, yeah, and, like- and some of our some of our uh, viewers will, will remember this as well. Um, I saw the Fangoria magazine a couple of years before I saw the film, and the Fangoria mm-hmm. magazine came out before the movie came out. The article headline was um, "Loomis dies, Michael cries." With that little I was tear. Thinking, yeah, with that, with the. And I just thought, well, one, you've spoiled the fucking end of the film, you donut, and two, do we really need to see this? Oh. The tear. It's the, the tear. tear. <laughs> and we all confirmed that Michael's tears have rejuvenating powers, right? Because his eyes grew back with those tears. They can yes, heal yeah. sick children. Yeah. Yeah, they can. They can heal sick children. <sighs> it's, so, a, it's a shocking moment. This is a VHS Halloween mm-hmm. 5. Mm-hmm. Here we, are. we all know that. And I, I'll never forget this. On the back, it says, Michael Myers is finally unmasked. Oh, for fuck's <laughs> sake. It's terrible. With, with, with him being knocked out by Loomis's breath. Oh, it's just, it's <laughs> awful. It's awful. This is, I, I think just, this is the original Fox release of it. It's got Fox on the side there. It just, it's, it's all neck. <laughs> it's all neck. It is. It's a terrible mask. So Ladies and gentlemen, Dave has given us a treat right there. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I just needed to Sure. All right. What is Dave your best kill? Uh, is probably um, Mikey getting killed uh, with the the garden thing claw. or whatever. The, yeah, claw, yeah. yeah. Or um, I think it was extra satisfying because he's a douchebag. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's it's extra satisfying. Toxic relationship. Him. Yeah. And I love that he he torments him before because he's like right onto the back of his car. <gasps> And he's like, what the fuck? You know, because he's all upset <laughs> and he gets it. And that I don't, I've still to this day, as I was watching it, I imagine that's taking place because we see him moments before Mikey pulls his car around and backs into behind the store. But for some reason, this scene looks like it's nighttime. Like it, it, it doesn't look yes. during the day. It's got this weird, it's bizarre, isn't it? Artificial it's lighting. Yeah, it look exactly. It, it it doesn't look totally night, but it doesn't look as bright and sunny as it was moments block, ago. It looks like they block natural light. Yeah, it and they've set up some artificial light to sort of uh to to um inter to uh, uh replace it, and it looks straight. Like at first, I'm like, are they under like a hangar? Are they inside a warehouse? Like where is it? Looks strange, but yet you still hear kind of the crickets and not the crickets, but you know the daytime chirps yeah, yeah. of the birds and mm-hmm. and things like that. And it just looks strange. It just looks. It's always looked strange to me. It looks like it's at night, um, yeah, or yeah. the evening or something. But anyway, that's a that's a side note. But uh, when he gets out of the car and he's like, all right, trick or treat. <laughs> you know, and and he's there, and he raises it up. You see his face going, you know, like oh my god, you know. Like, and then it just this? comes. This is yeah, going it, in your fucking face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It comes right down, and uh, it's a good cut too. And and then he falls. But if you look carefully, if you watch very carefully, when Mikey falls to the ground, there's uh, there's a just a, a quick jump. Cut. Jump. There's cut. like a yeah. Yeah. There's a weird yes. kind of uh edit there i I don't know why uh but it's 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 there and um uh, i would say that's probably you know yeah i mean as far as kills go it's not a great but i mean in in this movie uh it's probably one of the better kills because i think it's the most satisfying you know Mm -hmm. i mean you could point to the barn and the pitchfork and all that and yeah that's i mean that's great you know it's very jason um but this was, I think, just because the character's such a douche, you know. And how does, well, how both, does he... both those guys are though, aren't they? There's that one who kind of looks like a sort of poor man's Ed Begley Jr. as well, the, <laughs> the blonde head guy, <laughs> right? right. Comes yeah. out of the store. Um, how does Tina get? I mean, listen, Michael Myers is like towering over Mikey, so he's clearly a lot taller, a lot thicker. How does Tina not know when she gets in the car that this hulking man sitting there is clearly not? Mikey, <laughs> Andy no. must stink. Yeah. He's been living in a cave for a year. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. 
Exactly. <laughs> My worst, um, sorry, best my kill. best kill is exactly the the same one. Um, I I don't think it's conducive to a to a Halloween movie. Maybe at that point, maybe, mm-hmm. but not my Halloween. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The Halloween one and two of it. Yep. Um, I you know I think it's a it's a great um, Greg Nicotero effect. Um, but yeah, I, I when I when I first saw the film, I noticed that jump cut when he's yeah. lying on the floor. I don't know whether it's the switch between the dummy and him, or I, mm. I'm not sure what's going on. But yeah, there yeah. is that kind of jump cut, which could have been easily sort of dealt with. Do you know what I mean? It's it's yeah. still sitting there today. Do you know, I don't know whether they will smooth it out in um, uh, with these new 4Ks that are coming along. Maybe I bet you there's a lot of people that don't even know it, that don't even Possibly. pick it up. It's so it fast. Like a sore thumb. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he was. I mean, they're they're all pretty. I think they're all fairly lame kills. I don't want to see Michael with a scythe. No, <laughs> <laughs> he's a big old fucking. He does. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to see that. That's not what he's about at all. And that's what worries me about Halloween Kills. You know, this, it, great. The trailers look exciting, and there's lots going on, and people are getting killed left, right, and center, and firemen are getting chainsawed and what have you. Yeah. But it's not my Michael Myers. It's he's not a close combat person. Yeah, oh, he's Arnold yeah. in Commando. You know, yeah. look how look how um, how down to earth those kills were in the first Halloween. Mm-hmm. Strangulations uh, and a, a lot of strangulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, that's I think it. he strangled and everybody. He, well, yeah, he, he gets mobbed by the throat, doesn't he? But yeah, he strangled uh, Annie. Strangled mm-hmm. Bob at first. Yeah, and strangled yeah. uh, Linda. Yeah, he likes to yeah. torture and torture them before the final kill. That's right. Yeah, that's right. But look, but look how effective they were, and it just proves yeah. that you don't need if you've got the if you've got a great script, great tension, great score, great lighting and and, and cinematography, you can you can keep these you can keep the murders as basic as possible without resorting yeah. to you know let's let's see how flamboyant we can get you know let's what what, what instrument can we use now how how much right. blood can we squirt around it doesn't need it at all and and for me a, a lot of the kills in halloween 5 are, are just either poorly shot like the stabbings and things they've got no tension whatsoever oh, and don't. you know I, I guess the the only reason i'm drawn to mikey's kill is is like you say it's because the guy was a dick and you wanted to see that happen you know, we were getting to that point in slashes where we just went to, for, to see these films to see how inventive they'd become and how people would be killed next. You were rooting for the bad guy all the time. You were rooting That's for right. Michael. You were rooting for Freddie. You were rooting for Jason. And you know, he's uh, Mike. Is just another one of. It's just another statistic along with all the rest of them. Um, but I like the effect. I think that the, the, the they obviously built a big prosthetic for it and rammed that cl- garden claw into the face. And I, I thought it was pretty. Yeah. Um, I thought it worked well, but to it me, did. it's not a Halloween kill. It's a, it's more of a kind of an 80s slasher, uh, you know, a, a Jason kill or a, or somebody like that, you know. What about you, Frank? Uh, for <clears> me, <throat> it's a, it's, it's a kill later on towards the end, and that's the deputy that's sitting in the car to let him know that, you know, to to Charlie and Loomis that you know, oh, another car's coming up, and it's mm-hmm. Michael. He gave the deputy whiplash first and then you see him punch the window through and just literally beat the sh- living shit out of the out of the other deputy and you can hear it on the walkie talkie and everyone's like oh fuck he's here right you know you can hear ah, oh god <laughs> <laughs> you can tell me it feels, it feels like michael's tearing him the fuck apart yeah you know, yeah. I agree with Mikey being, you know, killed, you know, with the, with the garden rake because he's just a piece of shit. And it's probably they wasted <laughs> they wasted all their special yes. effects money probably on that one shot, that one yeah. kill. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But for me, yeah. it's it's the prolonged agony of the deputy mm. being killed by Michael. And he's ramming his head into the fucking steering mm-hmm. wheel because he's yeah. pissed. He probably just wasted all the gas going to the clinic. Yeah. He's like, fuck it, fuck you, fuck him, yeah. fuck Loomis, <laughs> fuck my knees, fuck you. <laughs> well, he so, gets to do that in the next movie. Oh, great. Love it. So, yeah. Uh, fuck his knees. Yeah, so for me, the best kill is probably one that's on screen and 
the rest and the best half is off screen but can be heard. And that's the deputy mm-hmm. in the car. Cool. So, worst kill, Dave. There's so many, but what is your worst kill? <laughs> Hang on a second. It's around here somewhere. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, my worst kill, I think, like, yeah, there's a lot of them, but I, I think uh, I'm probably just going to go with uh, Rachel uh, mm. because of everything that surrounds that, too. I mean, this is a character that, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Yeah, I mean, it, it, if they were smart, they would have... And I understand why they killed her. I mean, they're, well, you know, we're killing her. Cause like, oh my God, you know, everybody's can be killed and it's Rachel and somebody you like, but I think she should have been there right to the very end. I, I think mm-hmm. that's, I think the movie should have been about, if you're not going to carry it on with Jamie, you should have had her and Jamie and her be an anchor there and they get to know each other. Because now, you know, we often forget that Rachel, not that she didn't like Jamie, but she, she was hard for her to get used to having a foster sister. And what they go through in Halloween 4, you know, that arc allows Rachel especially to really appreciate the sister she has. And now she probably cares for her more deeply than she ever does, which to Darren's point makes no sense why she would leave her with this crazy doctor and go off and, I mean, it just doesn't, it's it's weird. Go fishing I mean, in the cabin. Like, I know it's been a year, but it's only been a year, you know, it's not been that long, yeah. you know, and, and, and um, uh, so I think that it, you know, it would have been nice to, to see that, to see that relationship build mm-hmm. um, even further. So, uh, but they killed her and they were originally going to kill her with scissors down the throat. That was the original plan was to do that, which was very sort of uh, uh, intrusive and mm-hmm. uh, phallic. Uh, you know, do, you think, and, do, you and, think it was, do you think it was always the intention to kill her off at this point or was she just simply not available and could only shoot for a few days or... Because, or are they trying to pull off a kind of Janet Lee in Psycho by shocking you that they're going to kill off one of the main cast members? And it just doesn't work, does it? It, it, Frank, it just it doesn't work at all. Yeah, I, Frank might have the answer to this. I, I, I don't know specifically, um, but I don't... I, I, it, you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Frank, but I think Rachel was... I think um, uh, Ellie Cornell was disappointed that that Correct. she was yes. that she was killed off so early because she, you know, I mean, Halloween Four was a in Hall- in you know relative terms was a, a moderate success for the for the for the franchise and for the movie, uh, and I think she was excited to return and and was very mm-hmm. disappointed that her her character was handled in the ways that it it was right, Frank. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, I actually I actually saw her at a convention uh, at least a decade ago and i asked her about that and she was very disappointed on how her character was killed off she didn't mind how she didn't mind that her character was killed it could have been at the end she said it you know rachel would have sacrificed herself to save jb right but she said yeah they were going for the psycho moment which didn't you know blend well with the fans no okay so that's no, it, you're you're absolutely right, and that's cool to know. Um, and I agree with her. I think her going out, you know, it's not that characters die; it's how they die, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I and mean, why you know, for they some die. fans, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, for some fans, it is that they die. But you know, when you look at it from a story perspective, if if Rachel had sacrificed herself to save Jamie, especially that that would have been a nice a nice moment for the character. Um, yeah. So yeah, so you know, when it comes to that kill, and like I said, we knew what they wanted to do, and Ellie Cornell was the one who was like no, I'm not having scissors smash down my throat. Um, so they decided to do what you saw. But it just feels so cheap and dismissive. And if Michael's right there, why are you going for the shoulder? I mean, why, you know, it's like what, I mean, that's not even going to kill her, you know, at the end of the day. I mean, it's, you know, into the shoulder. And and I know he probably took it out and went to town, but but it just was, it, it's, it's, it's the worst kill, not just because, not just because of the kill and the and the uh, mechanics of how that all works, and in, in, in terms of kill, but it's just everything that surrounds it. It's it's the baggage that I think surrounds the I, you know, the character and 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 how she felt about it and what they were originally going to do, and the fact that it, it completely missed the mark of what they were trying to do, and and uh, that character should have survived, not because mm-hmm. Tina is annoying, but because it, it serves the story better. Yeah. 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 Darren, you agree? Is, is that I, absolutely? It's the same for me. I, there's was absolutely no reason whatsoever to do this, um, you know. And you, you can tell. I mean, 
we we spoke about her Frank in the in the last episode and what a strong female protagonist that she is mm-hmm. and there's obviously yeah. a point and she's kind of very similar Dave to 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 uh, to Laurie you know she's kind of young smart virginal almost um and there's a point in the film where there's a turning point in the film where she becomes this protector like you yeah. have in Halloween where you know she realizes she has to protect the kids um and and the, the character was really strong, made some really smart decisions. Yeah, right from the get go on in this film, her dialogue's just terrible. You know what the decisions that she makes at the start, like we said, like leaving her a, a stepsister or foster sister or whatever on a such a you know important date for her. Um, and yeah, it's just I just think it, the whole thing's just lame. The character was weird, like. I can't remember if we were talking about this while we were live or, or if it was before we went live, but the way that she's so dismissive over, like when Dr. Loomis yes, calls yes, and yeah. says that, that, you know, says, you know, where's Max? Can you check on Max? You know, and, and clearly it's not Dr. Loomis. It's because of Jamie and, and yeah. her going, what? He, he's outside. What? okay i'll go check on him why would there's no way that character would be doing that after everything she's been through in the arc that she's had dr loomis calls you and says you need to check on the dog because your sister is kind of you know whatever she'd be like okay i'll be right back or she might take the phone with her or she might be hang on a sec i'm gonna get the portable phone or i don't know or whatever the case is she wouldn't be so dismissive about it like okay doc whatever like that's over uh, it's, yeah, it felt yeah. very strange for her character. Next to Loomis, to she should be the one who knows what Michael is capable of. Right. First yes. hand. Yeah. First right. hand. And yeah, like you exactly. said, to blow it off, yeah. you know, it's just like, it's, yeah. it's, it's almost like a baseball team or a sports team going up against their arch rival and saying they're capable of something. So don't yeah. think where this is going to be an easy win. That's it. But she's when, like that. It. When does Jamie find out she's dead? It's towards the end, isn't it? Is in she the in the house? attic? I can't remember that. Yeah. She's in the attic, yeah. 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 And that was a quick recovery, too. Rachel! Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, and that effort do, right? getting that body out of her house all the way to the Myers house and up the stairs <gasps> into the attic. Myers yeah. house. Oh, God. Five levels. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was the Myers house when I first watched it as a kid. I just thought it was some house. Yeah. For me, the worst kill is probably you, you know, it's I would I would say Rachel, but it, I I can't go through symbolism and what Rachel stands for. I would have to say just because of this one scene and the promising amount that that we'll get the footage is got to be the massacre scene at the police station as the worst kill because mm. we don't see anything. We don't know what happens to Meeker. And all we know is that there's a police station full of cops, probably like 10, 15, all at one time. And we only see two. Mm. I get what yeah. you're saying. But you hear it. You hear like the gunshots and that kind yeah. of stuff. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, It's the worst armed police station in the country. <laughs> this one guy has a, like a 1950s Tommy gun. 1920s Tommy gun, you know, it doesn't run out of bullets and um, you know, it's, 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 it's horrible. It's, it's a horrible kill and it's not done by Myers. Right. Right. (laughs) And and that's a point, you know, as well. Mika is, is such a great character as well. Oh, so underutilized underused in this film. song. I would have loved to have seen a buddy cop movie with Meeker and Loomis, like just, just them, (laughs) just like a, like, you know what I mean? Like with the sound effects and everything. Yes. (laughs) Point. Yeah, exactly. Loomis is the comedy. Meeker's the straight man, right? Meeker like, busting totally... Loomis out of the hospital in his nightgown. To be like, come on, Sam. Over here. We're going here. Follow me, Sam. Follow me right here. There we go. But I, in the car. I agree. Lethal whiskey. <laughs> yeah, lethal whiskey. That's so good. <laughs> That's good. Lethal whiskey. That's a good title. That's a good title. That's really good. Yeah, that's. Uh, I I see what you're saying, Frank. Yeah, it's a it's a sort of kind of like a throwaway thing, and and knowing that the, it actually was shot kind of makes it feel even more underserved, I guess. Okay, we'll leave uh, him locked up crying. Oh God, it's so awful. He's there on his knees in chains. Is he not kneeling next to like a water fountain or something? And yeah, he's, he's just playing he's, with his chains. He's playing yeah. with his chains, and his mask is still on. I don't understand why his mask is still on. Stapled. I mean, I, yeah, it's, I, it's stapled. Yeah, it's like part oh. of his head. Oh, it's terrible. 
Okay. Yeah. Now, the best moment of this movie, Dave. Finally, the best moment. The best moment in this movie. <sighs> Hang on a sec. Let me just uh, <laughs> you know, here and see what's going on here. Um, so uh, uh, let me. Oh, your unplugged. best moments on a fortune cookie uh, little label. <laughs> oh God, got it off. Well, and hang on. Before I get to my best moment, I wrote something down. To well, no, we're doing a worst moment, right? So maybe I'll leave it for that. Watching the movie again this morning, I don't know if this was intentional, but when uh, Tina and Sammy first leave Rachel's house. And Myers is standing in front of the window and it, you see him up there. And then Tina turns back and looks and he's not there anymore. But if you look very closely to the right side of the window uh, frame, you see Don Shank's shoulder kind of slowly move out of the yeah, way. Yeah. And I'm thinking, are, were we supposed to see that? Or was that <laughs> there like, I don't I, suck. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't understand. Like, I get the idea of they're not there. Like, I totally get yeah, that. Yeah. But why? But but that's not even that it's there sort of almost not there. I mean, that's kind of what it is, you know? It's, so I don't even know. Yeah, it's like, he's, it's like, he's there and he's like, kind of just kind of, or it, it, it's like, he's because uh, whatever was behind him on the wall or the dress or something is dark and yeah. he's in a dark outfit. So the clothing Camouf yeah, is, is, is camouflaged is, in somewhere. Is, yeah. yeah. It's blending in with that, but it's almost like the way he kind of just slowly continues to move it's as if there was a monitor in the room and Shanks was looking at it and he was like, oh, shit. Hang on. <laughs> there, that's better. That's better. You know, or somebody was like, can you just move over to the left a little bit? Just more to the left a little bit, Don. Yeah, that, that's it. But they forgot to kind of take that part out. It just it just looks funny to me. Well, it, there's a, um, as you said before, there are a lot of things we shouldn't see Michael doing. And, you know, that's one of them. We shouldn't see him dipping out of frame. That's but right. your best um, moment, Dave. My best moment would be the laundry shoot scene. Uh, I it. think it's, I think it's probably, <laughs> I, well, you know what? And, and again, it's relative, right? Like, I mean, you know, I think it probably is in this movie, probably the best scene in the movie in terms of, in terms of suspense, in terms of stakes, yeah. in terms mm -hmm. of like, oh shit, how is she going to get out of this? Mm -hmm. There's a great shot where, uh, you know, it's a POV shot from Jamie's perspective when she falls down and you see her looking, well, she's, you know, she, you know, um, the POV is looking up mm -hmm. and Myers get smaller and smaller as she falls down. It's a, a great perspective, great moment. Um, stabbing, excuse me, through and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I mean, again, you see Myers, you know, a lot, but I mean, in, in this movie, it's the best, it's the best moment in the movie for sure. Yeah. And she got stabbed in the calf. She and they did, did, which they, they never made it, it in. Yeah, that's why she, her leg is bleeding when she gets to the top. Oh, but you can't see children being stabbed. <laughs> you can't show that. <laughs> I think I th I think in this movie would have been for I, th I think all the children absolutely should have been stabbed in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, there's a, there's a deleted mob scene of Michael going through the children's clinic, <laughs> killing every kid. <laughs> yeah, through the the uh, well that play that they were doing, the Halloween that. contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's going no, up the steps, right. just click, yeah, click, click, yeah. Click. hanging on the on the on the thing, just going like this. And going by. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Darren, your best moment. My best moment is the laundry shoot. I just say I think it is. Um, and it's probably a, this the second moment that doesn't really belong in this in this film because it's too good a scene for this film. Yeah, um, agreed. it's actually it's it's a. <laughs> It is. It was like it now is. we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah, finally. <laughs> yeah, it's just that one. You know, how long is it? Like two or three minute sequence or yeah. something, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's really tense. And you know, when he's kind of perforating it with the knife, yeah. it's no wonder she got her leg slashed. Yeah. Um, it's it. Yeah, it's a great. It's a, it's a re it's the only bit of tension within the movie. I think I am going off the reservation again. Uh, my <laughs> God, best no. moment <laughs> is. is <laughs> Is one is, of the worst moments. <laughs> is me as me as this twelve year old boy watching this movie, uh, probably more like nine. But is when Loomis beats the shit out of Michael with the chains on, <laughs> and I could see all the anger that Loomis has, and he's just saying, "Die, die!" That this this character is willing to kill himself in order to stop Michael. But the worst moment is them being face to face. 
You know, and him going. Quaffing it in Michael's face. But, you know, if he, it's kind of poetic that those two, if you thought about it, that Loomis would die because you originally thought he was dead at the end of this mm-hmm. movie. And everyone, I can hear everyone in the theater going, oh, he's dead. They killed Loomis. Mm-hmm. And he would have went out killing Michael, trying to kill him, at mm-hmm. least. And for me, it's sim- just just because of pure symbolism, him taking all his anger out of putting him through, what, 20 years of bullshit and just taking that board and just... <laughs> you know, die, die every already. T- yeah, he's got this two by four and he's launching it on the chains yeah. and everything. Um, I will say that every time I watch that scene, though, I think of Tommy Jarvis in Friday the 13th Part 4. Die! Die! Yeah. yeah. Die. yeah. I always think of that. I never it, it, I never watch that scene and not think of that. It's the moment, though, when he's trying to trick Michael into walking down that little kind of veranda that he's on. Oh, go on, Michael, down there. She's down there. Go on, Michael. Just, like, yeah. just so that the old neck can come down. That's right. Here's That's your right. little girl. Yeah, and you want her? Do- come on. What are you doing? Shut up. It's like, oh, my God. She smells so-, so good, Michael. Can come you imagine? <laughs> I love your hair, darling. Oh my God! Even that's when even Myers kind of stops and is like, "I'm out of here," and this leaves or whatever. Um, one other moment that I want to say, actually, which I've always liked, um, and it's at the very maybe because it is at the very end, uh, literally the last second. Um, but from an audio perspective, I've always liked this as a kid, uh, even as a kid, even as an adult now, having an, uh, um, an appreciation for it. I, I, I do actually like when Jamie is in the uh, police station and she's there. And, and it is it is eerie. I mean, when it's kind of quiet and you just see the bodies and the fire and mm-hmm. it, it, it's it's eerie. That, that's a moment that, you know, again, if you put in another film, that's very mm-hmm. eerie. Like, you, know, you can always find those those moments in vacuums that are that are interesting and and uh when she's looking at the at the at the cell which is so ridiculous but you know and she's like no no and then it cuts to black and her voice just trails off no and then the theme begins i've always Mm. appreciated that i always thought that was a cool way to to end any halloween i mean that's a cool way to end a a film you know and you just kind of hear the echo of her voice and then the which isn't a bad just not a bad version of the theme oh and also can i say that the opening titles of halloween five are fantastic with the pumpkin slash and stuff it's a great opening title it's good score yeah it is yeah the only thing that scene is missing uh the cell scene the the massacre scene is in the corner of jamie maybe looking into a cell and seeing like a drunk santa yeah, you know, like passed out. Yes. <laughs> oh, he survived uh, it. <laughs> he's completely passed out. He's completely passed out. Yeah. Eating a salmon then, through the beard. Yeah. It's, <laughs> right. it's, it's Dan Aykroyd. And it actually is Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. Reprising that role. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Oh, okay. oh well, this is rough. This was rough, gentlemen going through this I we had these, these old these papers. memories <laughs> <laughs> look at all that worst stuff on the floor look, look at all the look damage all <laughs> damage the carnage all these papers <laughs> all the worst stuff moments it's <laughs> oh, yeah. terrible all this paper and stuff and trying to clean up clean as you go as they say okay uh, keep talking keep talking don't worry about me <laughs> End the no. show. <laughs> <laughs> well, End we all the know. Show. We all know it gets worse from here. Halloween four was probably the the, the best <laughs> as it ended, and now five through the rest of them, folks, are going to be really tough. It's it's you know we love, I guess, putting ourselves through hell. agony. <laughs> yeah. Well, hell would not have the, the uh, hell would not have the two of you. I think that's no, really what it no. comes down to. No. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we like to thank you know Dave as he goes through his worst of <laughs> moments for the remainder of the series. They're all written down right there. Oh, they are invisible ink, but they're, but it's there. <laughs> you know, and we're going to be back for Halloween Six coming up very shortly after this one. Um, as always, stick to the roads and the best of luck.
Cheers. Happy, happy Halloween.